Hi, this is Blake, and this is JASM for ID users, and we're going to talk about saving your data, also known as uploading and downloading data from OpenStreetMap. So I have a Tasking Manager project selected here, and I have a task square selected, and I say Start Mapping, and I'm going to say Edit with JASM, and this is going to load things up in JASM for me. So when you launch a project from the Tasking Manager, JASM automatically downloads the data. So that step is already handled for you. And this is very similar to in ID. When you start working in ID, ID is automatically downloading the data for you as you pan around. Even if you're panning around in an area that's not part of your task square. Um, I or JASM does not do that. So um, this transferred over the data layer. JASM uses layers, a concept of layers. There's a data layer or multiple data layers, and then there's imagery layers or multiple imagery layers. So I have no imagery. So I'm just going to have to come up to imagery, and I'm sure we use Bing. So I'm going to go ahead and select Bing. And now you can see I have an imagery layer underneath my data layer. And as I said, we automatically downloaded. I'm using right click to drag and pan, but we automatically downloaded the data that was in OpenStreetMap for my task square. And you can see, so the crosshatch is not part of my task square. Um, sometimes there's objects that are over there because they are one object and it started out in my task square but it ends outside. So that's why you see some of this but you don't see anything else downloaded. And somebody mapped that right to the edge of a task square, good for them. Um, but you'll see that pretty often. So there'll be stuff outside of your task square but only because a part of it does go through your task square. So we don't ever have to worry about, oh, that's no good. So we don't ever have to worry about, typically we don't have to worry, these are the upload and the down, okay, let's get them straight. These are the upload and the download buttons for JASM, and this is technically what downloads data, but the download is already automatically happens for you when you come out of the tasking manager. What doesn't automatically happen for you is the upload button. So let's just take a quick look. And so I'm, I don't know what I'm supposed to map, but I'm going to go ahead and map in a couple of buildings here. Building tool. This looks like a building. Click. Just like in ID, I suggest that you save, you know, literally every few, every five or six buildings, whatever it is that you do. You're not going to get a counter. Whoops. You're not going to get a counter. I didn't want those to snap together. Um, they snapped at the very end. So I'm going to hold down the control key so that they do not snap. Um, you're not going to get a counter like you do in ID that tells you how many changes you've made. So you're going to have to kind of watch a little bit more on your own. Um, luckily, ID, or JASM rather, is a little bit more forgiving if there's a problem during uploading because it's actually saving a local copy at the same time. So you're less likely to lose stuff, but I still suggest you know, every five minutes or so, go ahead and upload your data, which is what used to be called save or is called save in ID. So I, I've done a little bit of mapping here, and I'm going to go ahead and click on this button. So there's a button that does uploading, or I could, of course, go to file, and I could choose upload data. I typically just use the button. So I'm going to click on the button that says upload all changes in the active data layer. That's my data layer. I don't, it's the one that's selected with the checkbox. So I'm going to say upload. And JASM tells me exactly what it's about to upload, much like ID does. So this is telling me it's adding all of these nodes because each building has four nodes. And then it's adding these four buildings. So it's not quite the same sort of summary that you would normally get. It also provides an area for me to put in change set comments. If I have previous change set comments, it will save them in this pop-down list, which makes it quite easy to apply. Um, you're always supposed to add what you did. So it'll have defaults, and they're typically longer than this, but then you want to type in what you did. Added buildings. And then it'll say specify the data source, and it says obtain from current layers. So this knows that I used Bing. It sees Bing, but again, if I had some other way and I always used it, maybe I used two things. Maybe I used Bing and I used Mapbox. You can just go ahead and type it in the box. 
and then it'll remember it for a while so that you can just select it next time. And that's about it. That's all you really need to know. You don't even really, this is a bit of a double check. You also didn't quite see it, but there was a little bit of a validation step that happened, much like an ID, where ID gives you the yellow warnings. You might have seen some validation issues. Maybe we can try and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and upload these changes, but I did only use Bing. Um, and I did add building. So I'm going to say upload changes. And JASM does its thing. So one of the things that we didn't talk about, so as I said, this square got downloaded automatically for me, but let's say that I'm mapping and um, I'm doing all these buildings and I can just do a couple of buildings. Um, I'm just going to do this building and this building. Okay, do your buildings better than I'm doing them. But let's say, oh, I'm not, you know, I'm curious if these are mapped or not. I can come up and say download data and it's going to download the data for the whole area that's currently shown in in my in this panel here they call this the viewport but you know on my panel here if i click on download data um, it would let me change it so i could change it if i wanted to so i could change the area that gets downloaded but the default is exactly what you see back here in this viewport um, and the thing that you really want to pay attention to here is download as new layer if this is checked or not, right? So if I check this, then over here in my layers dialog box, I'm going to get another layer. It's going to say like data layer five, and there'll be two data layers, which can get a little confusing. So you want to make sure, and it seems like this is the default, you want to make sure that that's not checked. So this is just going to download the data and add it to this existing data layer, and then we'll be able to take a look at it. So I'm going to go ahead and say download. And that's what it did. So you can see it actually takes away the hash mark because now there's more data downloaded. So I could look and say, oh, okay, well, nobody did map these. And these were half in my square, so I'm just going to go ahead and map these. Um, I, you know, this happens all the time where you might want to download a little bit of additional data just to figure out if it's been mapped or, oh, this is interesting. So these are not connected. Um, okay, well, I'll as long as I'm here, I guess I'm just going to fix that. Uh, this is... Okay. Um, but this is something you do very often. You'll go ahead and say, oh, uh, you know, I need to see what happened here. So what happens here? So I'm just going to say download data, not as a new layer. This is not checked. That's perfect. I'm going to say download. Sometimes even just the download panel is enough, right? Because it throws a map up there. If I say download, I can see, if I give it a second, I can see what's mapped, and I can zoom in and actually just look at the map. Sometimes that's enough information, but typically you download the data. And now you can see my little crosshatch area uh, looks quite a bit different. Um, it's definitely not just a square anymore because I've downloaded additional data. So I did a little bit of extra mapping, and I'm just going to go ahead and now I'm going to say upload because I've been mapping. Aha! Excellent. So this went ahead and found a few problems. Um, these are only warnings and it tells you errors. Usually this should be fixed. Warnings. Fix these when possible. Other. Just information. Expect many false entries. So you might see stuff in here that you just don't care about. And for example, this warning about unnamed ways. So you can say continue or upload. Unnamed ways, this is a classic and it means that I haven't put a name on the streets that I edited. When I fixed these two separate streets so that they would route correctly, it's noticing, hey, you edited this object, and typically this object should have a name, but yours doesn't. This is something in hot mapping that's very common because we're typically not naming the streets. So I could say continue. If I say cancel, then it will open up an additional panel over here. And whoops, oh my goodness, okay. So it will open up an additional panel over here, and it will show, and I can zoom in. So I can click on this, and I can say I'm right-clicking, and I say zoom to problem. And it will actually show me exactly what it's talking about. It's saying this way is unnamed. You'll also notice up here in your layers panel, you now have an additional layer called validation errors that you can turn on and off to highlight exactly what it's talking about when it's complaining. Um, you can also just delete it. Typically, I turn it off because it's too hard to see the highlight of exactly what it's talking about. But do notice you'll get another layer up here, and you can just delete that layer. 
I can, as long as I have it selected. Um, don't worry about this. If I try and accidentally delete the data layer, it'll tell me. It'll say, oh, hey, wait. Are you sure you don't want to upload or save this? Um, so don't worry about that. Aerial imagery, if you accidentally delete that, you can just go get it back from the imagery menu. Validation errors, that's just that. So in this particular instance, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say ignore because I can't name this and it's not required. So I'm just going to say ignore. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to choose upload. And now this time it doesn't give me that error anymore. I could have just said there was a dialogue right then and there that let me. And again, so I'm just going to say, if I were adding, I did add buildings. So I'm going to say added buildings because I did do that. And fixed road because I did that as well. And I'm going to say upload changes. So that's about it. Um, the most tricky part is the validation, is when you go to save, if you get a bunch of validation results that you don't that you don't like the looks of, if you're not too sure. It's harder to have validation errors because we have the building tool. But So I just drew an area and didn't give it any tags. And if I say upload, it'll tell me untagged ways. So again, you can just say cancel, come back to your validation panel, untagged ways, say zoom to problem, that's the problem, um, and the problem is, it's not going to tell me about being unsquare, of course, but the problem is that I don't have any tags. Alt A, building equals yes, and then of course Q to square that. Now if I go and say upload, now my problem is just fixed. So in that instance, I didn't say ignore, I just actually fixed the problem, which was it was missing tags. Um, I'm going to say can't, well, no, I can go ahead and do that one. And so I'm going to take from my pop-down menu, added buildings, and then I'm going to say upload changes. That's about it. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.